So you just picked up a PS5 Slim. Once you open it up, you're gonna get the console. The disc version has a removable drive already installed. The digital one will be missing it. Power cable, HDMI cable, USB-C cable for charging and connecting the controller, the actual DualSense controller, these two feet for the horizontal stand, and the quick start guide, which you're not gonna need if you're watching this. With certain bundles, you might also get a digital code for a full game. First up is installing the horizontal stand feet. Have the console with the disk drive facing up. The two feet sort of go into these holes. Insert the back one like this and the front one like this. You might have to press them in a bit hard. Now you don't get a vertical stand with the slim. That does need to be purchased separately if you like the vertical position. Funny enough, I tried the OG console's vertical stand that I had lying around. Now I don't recommend it, but you know, you can get it attached because the slim console does have that same attachment hole at the bottom. I guess it sort of fits, but it doesn't really look good. Let's flip this console over now and install the cables. The power cable, the HDMI 2.1 cable, the other end goes to your TV. I have it all connected and ready to turn on for the first time. First thing here is pairing the DualSense controller. Use the provided USB-C cable to pair it. Once it's paired, you can unplug it if you want. Select the language. Turn off that annoying screen reader. Sign into your Wi-Fi network, or you can plug in a wire if you want a wired connection. Adjustments here for the HDR and the display. Here's a power and rest mode settings. You can choose optimized experience, low power use, or custom. I recommend selecting optimized experience to take full advantage of your PS5. Software agreement here. At this point, we need to apply a system software update. This will take five to 10 minutes and the PS5 is gonna restart a few times. In the meantime, you can download the PlayStation app and pair it with your PS5 if you want but I'm gonna do all my setup here manually without the app. My console is now updated. I can connect the controller again. Now I need to actually update the DualSense controller. After that updated, my console sort of got stuck at the screen. I waited about 10 minutes and it just wasn't going anywhere. So I turned the console off manually using the power button and then turned it back on. And at this point, it's now updating the disk drive. Now we need to register the disk drive to the PS5 and you do need an online connection for this. This is a one-time thing and you can use it offline after it registers. Now we have the option here to insert a game disk so the console starts installing a game while you're continuing your initial setup. Sony sent me a copy of Horizon Forbidden West. So I'm gonna insert the disk for that. By the way, the eject button is now closer to the drive, different spot than the OG console. Sign into your PlayStation account or create one if you don't already have one. You can also use the app to set up and connect. I'm gonna log in manually though, the old fashioned way. Option to add additional security to your account if you want. Now this setting allows you to play your digital games offline. It will essentially make this PS5 your main home console. Keep in mind, you can only have one PS5 per PSN account with this setting enabled. I'm actually gonna leave my OG PS5 still as my main, so I'll select don't enable here. You have the option to transfer data from your old PS4 or another PS5 here. I won't be doing that. Welcome to PlayStation 5, setup is now complete. I do like the dashboard of the PS5. I actually like it more than the Xbox dashboard. You do get a full copy of Astro's Playroom included. That's the best game to really experience the full functionality of the DualSense controller. At this point, you can also redeem any game codes you may have and really start playing and enjoying your PlayStation 5. Sony actually used to offer 20 generation defining games to everyone that purchased a PS5 and had a basic PS Plus membership. They stopped doing that earlier this year. So a bit of a shame. Now you can choose to purchase 
is their XR Premium memberships, which do include a ton of games, but those can get quite expensive in my opinion. By the way, when it comes to your TV or your monitor, you do want to get a 4K 120 hertz monitor or a TV for this. This monitor right here is a BenQ. I'll leave the link in the description. By the way, they're not sponsoring this video. And if you're looking for a TV, I personally love the LG C2 or C3. I think they're the best value that give you an OLED display with a 4K resolution and 120 hertz. Now the new PS5 Slim does have a larger one terabyte hard drive, but if you do want to add extra storage, you can easily do that with the Slim console as well. Make sure you purchase a compatible M2 SSD, preferably one with a heatsink. Before starting the installation, make sure your PlayStation is properly shut down. Unplug all the cables, including the power. Maybe wait about 30 minutes if you just finished playing because the internals might be warm. Have the console sitting upside down with the disk drive facing up. Remove the two feet. This bottom cover here needs to be removed. You slightly kind of lift the cover away from the console. Remove this screw from the expansion slot cover and then remove the cover. And here's the expansion slot. Uh, make sure you don't drop any of these small screws or parts into the console itself. Remove this screw and spacer. The M2 SSD sort of inserts here the same way as it did with the OG PS5. You can then install the spacer in the correct spot and tighten it all with the screw. Put the expansion slot cover back on, fasten the screw, attach the cover back again, put on the feet for the stand and then connect all the wires and basically turn on your PS5. At this point, the console should recognize the M2 SSD. This formatting guide comes up and you you just kind of need to follow the on-screen instructions and we're ready to go here and you can start downloading the games directly to them to SSD or even move existing ones to it. Now let's look at that removable drive. The whole process is actually really quick and simple. Have that console in that same upside down position with the disk drive facing up. Lift this cover away from the console to remove it. Then use your fingers to lift on this part of the disk drive and it just lifts out. Now attaching it back on is simple as well. These clips on the disk drive need to match these two holes with the triangle marks. And then you simply just press it in place and you'll hear a click. That's really it. So if you buy the digital and get the disk drive separately, or maybe you need to replace your disk drive, it's just really simple to do. Now, anytime you attach a new disk drive to your PS5, you will need to register it to the console and online connection is required. You saw me remove all these covers now. So in total, there's four covers and I'm sure Sony and many third parties will be releasing custom covers for this slim console. All the four covers easily come off and there might be some multicolored effect and designs here since you have these top and bottom covers separate. So that's really what you need to know about your new PlayStation 5 Slim and get the most out of it. If you have any questions at all, just leave a comment and I'll try my best to answer them. Even if I don't answer it, I'm sure there's a lot of knowledgeable viewers that will reply to your comments. And also let me know what you think about the new Slim unit. Is it worth the upgrade if you already have an OG PS5? And if you still don't have a PS5 yet, do you prefer to get the Slim or the OG console? Thank you.